as we start the discussion, is the talk. Of course, public, speak, uh, public participation is clearly very critical in this nation, whether you're looking at uh, the significance from a constitutional perspective where it's a pillar, whether you're looking at the promotion of democracy, the importance really cuts across the board, from the budget process to the legislative process to even the tendering process. And public participation is clearly highlighted across the board, from the constitution of Kenya, the sovereign power. Sovereign power belongs to the people of Kenya. You're looking at uh, Public Finance Management Act, the County Governments Act, and any other law. There is that aspect of public participation. But I put, I throw a spanner into the works. Is it just your presence or should there be meaningful participation? And when you're participating in, whose process are you participating in? And what is the criteria, really, of being a participant? So these are issues that we hope our guests will address, and of course, please ask those very practical questions as well. So now please put your hands together for our first speaker, Uriah Trust, Executive Director, Miss Grace Maingi. A big round of applause for her. Good morning, everyone. Uh, like you've heard, my name is Grace Maingi. I work for Uraya, which is a civil society organization working in Kenya. We focus in the area of civic education, civic engagement, and also how we can transform institutions. Um, in terms of our work around public participation, what we're focused on is giving Kenyans the information, the knowledge that they need to be able to interact with the Constitution, but also for them to interact on issues around budget-making processes, for them to interact uh, when it comes to public participation around the legislative process, and also then how can they transform uh, their particular, especially counties. Uh, we have worked with the Ministry of Devolution and Planning. We are able to work with them and KICD and the Council of Governors to develop a curriculum on civic education. But one of the things that we saw was very important was to give Kenyans milestones when it comes to public participation. So we developed a calendar and every year we have this calendar that shows when and how you participate as a member of the public. And those are some of the programs that we, we undertake, apart from also then facilitating what we call budget facilitators. These are ordinary men and women who uh, come from the various communities. They apply and actually undergo a test before we select them as budget facilitators because it's a long process that we take them through training for nine months. So by the end of nine months, they're able then to go back to the community and help people understand the budget process. So that's some of the work that we undertake. But back to the topic of today, in terms of milestones, challenges, and prospects, there are various milestones that we have been able to achieve, and some of them have been enumerated by the chair, uh, even uh, by, by our other colleagues who have spoken earlier. In terms of the framework for public participation, the constitution, the various laws, a number of counties have been able to develop the public participation laws but some of them are still developing the regulations. So what exactly are the challenges? If we have programs that are going on, where is the problem? Where is the disconnect, like we were asked? We were able to carry out a survey last year, and what we were asking ourselves as Raya is, to what extent do people engage? And when they engage, how do they engage? How do they get the information to engage? And how meaningful is the engagement? This uh, study that we carried out was using the participatory research methodology approach. And basically, we selected 30 counties that we went to. We had focus group discussions. We had key informant interviews, not only with members of the public, but with county government officials, national government officials, ordinary men and women to ask them, how have you been engaging? Now, for us, the concern is as much as the, the law is in place, how much are people engaging, especially those who are not in civil society? Ordinary men and women, do they understand the processes and are they engaging? We were able to ensure that we balanced our questionnaire. Uh, we had both the equal numbers of men and women. Majority of the people who we sampled were between the age of 25 and 45. So you can see that's 
really within the, the parameters in terms of majority of the population. Now, the findings that we had in terms of people's understanding and people's engagement were a bit worrying because one of the questions we asked was, within the past year, have you attended any public or town hall meeting to discuss affairs of your county? And 60% said no, 40% said yes. So that can worry us to some extent because the amount of resources that go to counties, the whole th theory of, around devolution and the principles of devolution is that it's bringing service delivery closer to the people, so the people should be engaging a lot more. But of course, put it in the context that our constitution and our work around devolution is still very young, but we need to up these numbers. So 60% had not attended any uh, forum. And we were able to look at various counties, how many men, how many women, and we'll be able to share the, the research. We're about to publish it. Now, the next question we asked is, what are the challenges hindering citizens from attending these forums? And 59% said they didn't have any information about the forum. 20% said they didn't have time to attend the forums. 10% said, I don't think my participation is necessary. 9% said the venue was too far. And 3% had other answers. So, you know, there's a concern there in terms of whether information about the forums or even about the activities is getting to the people. We also asked other questions in terms of if they had attended any public forum to attend, what activities did they participate in? Those who attended, 43% uh, attended county budgeting forums. So, so that's a good percentage. 23% attended forums around the county integrated development planning. 19% the annual development planning and 14% participated in public uh, forums around the bills, input in terms of county uh, legislation. Now, one of the other key things that we asked is, how did they participate? Those who participated, did they contribute? Did they give memoranda? Did they share their ideas? And 72% of them said they shared their ideas and the suggestions. So that's a good, a good number. 21% said they attended, but they did not contribute. So they were there, they heard, and they went home. And 7% said that they submitted written memoranda or petitions. So some of the work that we focus on is how can we move that 7% to 50%, to 80%, getting people to actually submit memoranda uh, and petitions on the various issues being presented uh, to them at the county level. The other issue we asked is, thinking about public participation, how easy or difficult would you say it was to participate? And actually, when we looked at it, to participate in county and budgeting uh, planning 62% said it was very difficult for them. So that's why our work focuses on the county budget uh, facilitators. 77% said it was very difficult to influence county decisions. And 68% said it was difficult to access information on county budgets, legislation, and project plans. So advocacy with the county governments and even at the national level is how do we ensure not only do the people know about the forums, but they have the information they need to actively participate. How can we ensure that even if it's about a budget, all the people need to know is what are the priorities, what was used the last time, what will be used in the future. And so trying to really break it down in a simple way, that's the work that we try to focus on. Now, in terms of whether they felt their opinions were addressed in the forum, 72% said no, and 28% said yes. So if you have a number of people who attend forums, uh, public participation forums, and they feel that their views are not being taken on board, then what you see is low participation. And I think those are some of the challenges that we need to address. So what are the prospects uh, in the interest of time? If we look at the legislation, we're being given various modalities to engage. A very key one is the County Budget Economic Forum. Now, every county is supposed to establish a county budget economic forum. It's made up of the governor, the, all the county executive uh, committee members, and an equal number of citizens. And those citizens are supposed to represent various bodies, whether it's youth, women, professional associations, uh, business, you know, trade unions, so on and so forth. A research was done to assess 
the county budget is economic crimes in a number of counties, and we're not doing very well. Yet this is a great opportunity for us to participate in, in terms of having a direct seat at the table where we're able to discuss issues for the county, but also be the channel of participation for the various groups that we represent. So that's one key thing that we hope that now with the new county governments uh, being formed, that the County Budget Economic Forum, CPEV, as it's, CPEV, as it's uh, called in short form, will be really taken up by the citizens, but also taken up seriously by the county government. I think the other prospect that we have is with the new counties that have come in place, we've had five years or four years to learn what not to do. What not to do. Don't put an advert in the paper, you know, two days before the forum. You go there, you know, you'll go to some of the uh, finance uh, meetings and they give you a whole batch of, you know, a page document of 600 pages for people to digest. So that's why we have to see how can we make sure that the budget processes are simplified for people to engage. And people need to engage. We encourage people to engage on their issues. So if you have a group and your issues are about lighting in your area, the issues are about security, the issues are about water, how do you engage in the county budget processes around those issues? Because you can't, you know, as, as an ordinary person, you wouldn't be able to go for each and every forum. But if we organize ourselves into sector groups, groups that are able to focus on the specific issues that are dear to us, then we can be able to uh, improve our public participation. One of the new phenomenons we have seen coming up, especially in urban areas like in Nairobi, is the use of uh, social media, the use of WhatsApp platforms to engage. Uh, the very vibrant WhatsApp platforms for Kileleshwa, for example, Ward, uh, Kilimani Ward, whereby people are able to engage with the ward administrator, the sub-county administrator on issues. I think we need to move away from thinking social accountability work, for instance, is only for people in rural areas. How are we in Nairobi, for those of us who come from Nairobi County, engaging directly with the ward administrators, uh, being able to engage you know, with all aspects of uh, public participation. So I hope um, with those few remarks, you've been able to generate a number of questions. But what I would say in conclusion, when it comes to public participation, it's a long journey, yes. But if the people don't feel that their views are going to bring change or that are going to be taken up as meaningful, then we won't have a meaningful participation. Thank you very much.